Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and in this video, I want to talk about the Flan voiceover artist situation. I've seen people DM me about it. I've seen discussions about it on Discord servers, on Reddit, and other forms of social media. So in case you're unaware, as of this morning, October 10th, 2024, Flan's voiceover artist was changed in the English dub of Epic7. For the last four years, Flan, as well as Pirate Captain Flan, have been voiced by Kelly Ohanian. Currently, Pirate Captain Flan, Flan, Presumably, the World Arena skin for Pirate Captain Flan for this season, and the upcoming Afternoon Soak Flan, those are all now voiced by Ashley Ebner. In case you do not know the difference in their voices, I will play a clip for you of both of them here. What made you hop aboard my ship? Money? Honor? Knowledge? Well, it doesn't matter, because if you're with me, you'll have it all! What made you hop aboard my ship? Money, honor, knowledge, well, it doesn't matter, because if you're with me, you'll have it all. Now, as far as I can tell, Kelly is still the voiceover artist behind Inos and Inos 2.0, at least for now. So that's the situation, but I want to get into the nitty gritty about how did we get here, and also in case for those of you who are out there wondering, why are we talking about this, right? Because I always get questions about why am I talking so much about voiceover artists in my videos, right? I often get asked, why do I care so much, right? I shout these people out in every single how to play video in my trivia sections. And I also highlight them in my first thoughts and initial impressions videos. Case in point, this week when we did Afternoon Soap Flan's first thoughts and initial impressions, I shouted out both Kelly and her work as well as the new incomer, Ashley Edner, right? So there's two main reasons why I'm talking about it, right? Why I'm so passionate about these things. Number one, a good voiceover performance, in my opinion, changes my entire perception of a game or an anime, right? It makes me feel a stronger connection to the game or show and its characters. Case in point, on stream right now, we are currently going through Final Fantasy 16. Ben Starr as Clive Rossfield is brilliant in that game. That whole cast is incredible. They all deserve awards. I would not be anywhere nearly as emotionally invested in that game without their performances. In the world of Epic Seven, you need only to look at Arbiter Vildred to kind of understand what a good voice performance can do for your game, right? Descending Blade and Can You Hear the Approaching Ruin are the two most iconic voice lines in the entire game. They're basically ingrained into the community's DNA. Whether you play the game with the sound off or in a different dub's language, right? Different language dub, I should say. Japanese, right? Korean. You know those lines, right? They are just baked in to that character, to this game, and its community, right? If you woke up tomorrow and David was not the voice of Vildred, I think people would notice, right? David Arago Jr. is the voice of Arbiter Vildred. He is Descending Blade, at least in my opinion. Number two, I've been meeting with these people at different cons and various functions for the last like 20 plus years. And I'm not a voice actor, so I could have this entirely wrong. But from what I could gather, it's not exactly the most lucrative career. Most of the people who do this job, they usually have to do other things to supplement their income, such as maybe a second job, autographs at various different conventions or even streaming in the case of some of the newer uh voiceover artists that are in gotcha games right you're doing all of these things again to supplement your income and hopefully one day make it big enough you know hit that like major role that kind of like propels you into the spotlight if not you're hoping that you can accumulate enough experience to take on a director role because it pays more money right let's give you a real like Famous example of this whole thing. Brian Cranston, famous for Breaking Bad. He started his career as a voiceover artist, as a voice actor for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the anime Macross, right? He started as a voiceover artist in hopes that one day he would get bigger and bigger acting roles until eventually he landed the role of a lifetime as Walter White. It changed his entire life, right? So that is why, the two reasons why I am highlighting voiceover artists a lot in my videos so now back to the flan situation at hand you might be asking why was kelly changed right how did we get here so let's take a quick look here and rewind the clock to earlier this year 
in January of 2024. Here is a press release from the Screen Actors Guild at SAG-AFTRA and Replica Studios introduced groundbreaking artificial intelligence voice agreement at CES. I believe this is the Consumer Electronics Show, right? So you can see, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll link it down in this video's description if you want to read more of this press release. But essentially what it boils down to is this is an agreement between the Screen Actors Guild, right? Like the union that represents all, most of these voiceover artists that says, hey, we're going to let companies use AI versions of your voice, but they still have to pay you, but it's only going to be a fraction of what we would pay you if they got, you know, they hired you in person. So it gives them another option. Like we don't have to book, you know, uh, a Christina V, who's the voice of Illinav, right? We don't have to book her. We could just get the AI version of her at a discount. And so they thought when they came to this agreement that it would be a good thing for voice actors because it's like, oh, you'll get more work now. And if you go take a look at the response to the press release over on Twitter, right? Um, you need only scroll to see it's, uh, it's not a good look. It was not a good response overall. You see a number of voiceover artists that are just like, the hell, like I didn't want this, right? And in some cases, if you're not, you know, making a killing, right? You're not one of the top names. You might not actually get like live bookings. It might just be, oh, I only book your AI voice for a cheaper, like a much cheaper discount from here on out. So you can see people don't feel good about this. Like it threatens their livelihood. If you look at some of the responses to the thread, the people that are not happy with you have Ann Yatko here. This is the voice of Ida, Festive Ida, Solitary of the Snow. Obviously, she is not super happy about the whole situation. Here's Anna Graves. This is the voice of Luna, of Judge Kisei, right? New Moon Luna, one of the most popular VAs in our game for one of the most popular characters in the entire game, right? Obviously, she is not happy about the announcement as well. If you woke up tomorrow and Luna's VA was replaced, I'm sure people would not be happy about the whole thing. So as you can see, they're not happy about this whole agreement that had kind of taken place here at the beginning of January. And this continued on for several months until we get to July, where this post kind of surfaced, recapping the whole thing. Originally posted our Gotcha Gaming when the news broke, posted here again to the Epic 7 subreddit. I will link this also down in the video's description. Right? SAG AFTRA has officially went on a video game strike over artificial intelligence. This may affect the English dub of Epic 7. As you can see here in the statement, officially SAG is going after uh, going to the bargaining table with a convenience bargaining group that includes, so these are the people that they're on strike against, Activision, Blindlight, Disney, Electronic Arts, Formosa, Insomniac, Llama Productions, Take-Two, Voiceworks, and Warner Brothers, right? Now, you'll notice that Blindlight is highlighted here. If you look at Blindlight and who they work for, they work for Epic 7. This is one of the studios that's responsible for supplying the English voice talent for Epic 7, right? So if the VAs are striking with blind light in order to have an agreement and they can't come to an agreement, Smilegate is in a situation where if they need a voiceover artist, they have to either come to the, the uh, agreement table or I should say blind light does, right? To get the issue resolved or blind light will have to basically do something in uh, the midst of this strike, either just not have an English voiceover artist or hire somebody who may not be union, may not be SAG after, right? Um, which that has its own kind of, you know, ramifications because it's like, hey, you're you're essentially going against this strike, the, the will of the people who work in this industry. I'm not going to get into the politics of that, but hopefully you can kind of see where this is all going. So this came to ahead this past week where Kelly posted on her official Twitter the following. It's such a shame that this game refused to sign an interim agreement when I asked them to, after they invited me to reprise a character I've enjoyed voicing for the past four years. So obviously this is the original voice of Flan, basically saying that they issued an interim agreement. This is essentially a temporary agreement that does not violate the current strike that is happening with SAG-AFTRA versus all of these companies. It is basically a good faith agreement that until the entire thing is resolved, the, the entire strike is over, you can use my voice under these conditions, right? Now, if you scroll down here, you'll see her follow tweet that kind of explains what the conditions are. To the voiceover artist who auditioned for a recasted character, please, please know 
that you are working without critical AI guardrails in your contract, aka the very thing your fellow actors have been fighting so immensely hard for these past few months. So as you can see, it is directly tied to this AI stripe. So as to what that looks like, the whole situation, this is where we leave it. We don't have any more information. And once I get it, I will let you guys know. But for right now, the optics of the whole situation seems to be Kelly wanted to come back as Flan. Smilegate or Blindlight basically said, no, we don't agree to your terms to protect your voice from AI. You know, we got somebody else. Have a nice day. That is the optics of it. That is not necessarily what it is. But again, that is what the picture looks like. But again, that's why I wanted to make a video kind of to update you on the whole thing. As for my personal take on it, I hope that one day Kelly gets to come back and be reinstated as Flan, Pirate Captain Flan, the World Arena skin at the end of the season, and Afternoon Soak Flan. Like, no disrespect to the new voiceover artist. It's just, this is Kelly's character. This is who I resonate with as the character, right? And to see that essentially somebody had a character that was obviously so near and dear to them taken away from them. If you look at Kelly and her appearances at various different conventions and functions, she is actively promoting herself as Flan, as Inos, right? But Flan's great. She was the um, the first video game character that I got to record from my at-home studio, aka closet. So that was fun. To see somebody so passionate about the character who has voiced these characters for almost half a decade at this point, I think that eventually Smogate should do right by them and reinstate this person as the character when everything is all said and done. Hopefully there is an amicable solution here, uh, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. But yeah, at the end of the day, that is just my opinion. Now I want to hear from you all. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation down in the comments below. would love to hear any and everything from you. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.